Hi everyone, Ramadan Kareem. Hope you all are doing well. Today's video is as usual getting ready for the holy month and the first day of Ramadan. It took a while for me to edit and publish because of busy schedule at home. My husband was away for a week and he was back on the first day of Ramadan that too after iftar. Kids were having their online exams and I was totally busy with them. Had to do some grocery shopping a day before Ramadan. All together was a bit hectic. But I made sure I shoot the previous day and the first day as a vlog to show you all. This time we are in a new place this Ramadan. But it's nothing new because we were anyway in the Middle East like how we were earlier. Only last year was a bit different as we were in Kerala where the whole family used to join for iftar some days. Kids school are opening soon and I had to declutter their shelf. As we had bought two study tables for them recently, needed a bit of organization. I could use these empty areas to keep some of the extras lying around, especially my sewing box and drilling stuff. Kids room looked like a hostel room for me, two beds together, two tables together but I had no much options. So gave a bit of change in the position for the tables which looked better than before. These fitted sheets are from IKEA that I had ordered few days back. I couldn't find matching pillow covers online and even here. So bought a pair somewhat that can match to it. I am using duet for both and for one I had the pillow cover so changed one. Duets looks good on bed and it's easy for my kids themselves too or I can say it's easy for me to teach them how to make their bed. Now they do it easily every morning. This again is another duvet cover that was ordered from IKEA. If you find it hard to remove the hair from your comb, this is what I do. Use a toothpick and swirl around. The hair comes off easily and your comb is neat.
back in the kitchen. I had bought some mutton to prepare something for my kids as my husband is away and he doesn't eat mutton. I thought to make dinner on the first day of Ramadan using mutton. But that was possible only if Ramadan was starting on second. But here in Oman it was on third and my husband arrives on third. So instead I prepared the previous day dinner with mutton. Made a simple curry and to go along prepared ghee rice. I sauteed crushed shallots, ginger, garlic and green chilies along with some curry leaves in hot coconut oil in a pressure cooker till the rice melts goes. Then added mutton pieces and cooked till the color changes to pale. Here instead of onion, I added shallots which taste better. Now goes in tomatoes, some salt, crushed black pepper, turmeric powder, coriander powder and garam masala powder. Give a good mix. Do not add water as the mutton itself will release enough water. So cover the cooker, lock the pressure, cook on high flame till first whistle and then reduce the flame. Cook for 15 minutes more and then turn off the flame. I later added coconut milk and the curry was done. This was in fact prepared for the previous day dinner and for suhu together. While they were having it, I moved on to some more cleaning and decor for Ramadan. Not too much was done this time. It was simple and neat. This is essential oil dispenser that I bought from Centerpoint recently. Very beautiful piece with a lovely color. had my turmeric milk and we went to bed early because we had to wake up for suhoor Every day in Ramadan unless I have guests coming for iftar at home I get into the kitchen after 12 or 1 pm depending on what I am preparing This time trying for a healthy Ramadan routine Exploring food in this beautiful country I have put on some weight but I have never missed out my workout any time Every time on the first day of Ramadan we will be having rice rotis for dinner but this time I'm making the rice dumplings. I haven't made it since very long time. Was craving for this few days back and that's how I decided to prepare on the first day. The best part of preparing rice rotis or the rice dumplings is that if you want to make any steam snack which is a healthier option to the fried ones the dough is the same. So I prepare it together. I melted some palm jaggery in case I wanted to add for the semolina drink or tea. For snack, I cooked chicken with some salt, black pepper and turmeric powder along with some water.
I forgot to keep chicken the needed quantity in small packets which I do every time so that it's easy for cooking. So keeping it on this day in Ziploc bags. Someone recently asked, not sure if it was in the comments or on my Instagram, to show the warm semolina drink. Though I had anyway shown number of times earlier, thought to show it again as it might be difficult to search for that. Here I take half milk and half water depending on how many glasses you will need. Keeping that for boiling. Add a pinch of salt for balance. Now the measurement for the rava or the semolina is 1 spoon semolina for every 1 cup. I usually don't roast them but if you prefer roasted, you can use that. I needed 4 cups of drink. I've already kept 3 cups of milk and water for boiling. I mix the rava in 1 cup water. The milk is boiling, time to add the semolina mix. As soon as you add, make sure you keep stirring or else there will be lumps. Keep stirring or cook the semolina till it's done. Make sure flame is medium low. Time to temper. Use a tablespoon of ghee or oil, whichever you prefer. Fry shallots and cashews. If you like raisins, you may add that too. And for an extra flavor, if you like, you may add a pinch of cardamom powder. My family, including me, do not like the flavor of it in this drink. Add that to the semolina milk. Mix and that's done. I added sugar to each cup while serving. Now for the chicken curry for the rice dumplings, heat some coconut oil in a cooking pot, saute crushed ginger, garlic and green chilies along with some curry leaves. Once the raw smell is gone, add chopped onion and saute till soft. Time to add chicken pieces. Give a mix. Cover and cook on medium flame. After the color of chicken changes, add salt. Then goes in chili powder, turmeric powder, coriander powder and garam masala powder. Give a good mix. Parallelly preparing the filling for the snack. Heat some coconut oil in a kadai. Fry some curry leaves. Then saute crushed ginger garlic and green chilies. Add chopped tomatoes into the chicken. Mix and cover till the chicken is cooked. Now over here. Add chopped onion, let it get soft and translucent. Add some salt. It will be hard for me to mix in the rice dumplings in this pot. So I used a bigger clay pot that I had which is wide enough to mix well. For the snack filling, add crushed black pepper, add some turmeric powder and mix. Had some stock left after cooking the chicken for the snack, so I added that to the curry. 
You can shred the chicken with your hands or use a blender. Add that to the onion and mix well. I don't know if you remember me showing this tip of storing coriander and mint leaves for a longer period. Use a glass bottle and place the leaves in it adding some water. Just cover it with a plastic cover and keep in the fridge. It's time for me to change the water. I had bought this coriander leaves 5 days back and it's still fresh. Chop coriander leaves for the snack filling as well as the curry. Now for the rice dumplings. You can keep it simple by using just a rice flour, but the best taste comes when you add a ground mix of coconut, shallots and cumin seeds. In some places in Kerala, they add fennel seeds alone, while others add just the cumin seeds. But this time I added both and that tastes amazing. This is nothing sponsored, but my favorite brand for the rice roti flour is Nirapara. I even used double hose which I couldn't find anyway. Here I used 3 cups of flour, that's for the snack and the dumplings. The water quantity is 1 is to 1 ratio and it depends on the quality of the flour too. Here I'm using a cup more for easy mixing in the stand mixer. Add some salt and keep it for boiling. Add the flour and mix really well. The best part of having a stand mixer is that you can knead the dough while it's burning hot. To this added the ground coconut mixture. I've seen people cooking the dumplings by boiling in water, but I always prefer to steam the dumplings. It's a time pass when you have someone to speak to while doing this job. You will need tiny quantity of the dough, roll and gently press with your thumb to give that shape. I kept aside few bigger size dough for the snack and the rest I prepare the dumplings. For the snack, just flatten each ball, you will have to fill and cover. I'm steaming both at the same time. Steam for around 12 to 15 minutes. For the chicken curry, I'm making a ground paste of the roasted coconut I had that I took along with me from Kerala. This is optional. You can add the dumplings as such to the curry. Now instead of the roasted coconut mix, you can also add coconut milk which again will taste really good. The snack as such is tasty and this is the healthier option but to take it to the next level, fry these by marinating in a mix of red chilli powder, turmeric powder, coconut oil and some warm water. No need to add any more salt as the filling and the outer layer has got enough salt in it. Mix the dumpling in it. Take out each gently from the steamer or else it can break. Add the rice dumplings into the gravy. Give a gentle mix. The curry may seem too much for this but don't worry 
it will get thick as it sits. The dumplings need to be soaked in the curry for some time to get that best taste while having. Now this can be again tempered by frying shallots, curry leaves and dried red chilies in coconut oil but I skipped that part. That's for a simple lemonade. Squeeze out the lemon juice, add some sugar, add water. Then goes in some salt for a balance. This is again the same way how I stored mint leaves. It's very fresh. Adding mint leaves to the lemonade gives a refreshing taste. I sometimes add a bit of black pepper or a slitted green chili just for a kick. And it shouldn't be too much that you can't tolerate. Time to fry the snacks. Heat some coconut oil, fry few curry leaves, then add the snacks and shallow fry. It's almost time for iftar and hence setting the table. My husband arrived at the airport at 6.45 pm. Kids were unaware about it. They were told that he'll be coming only the next morning. It's always exciting to see their expression when we give them surprises. So my husband asked me not to tell them as he wanted to see them getting surprised. I'd in fact put two cameras and asked my husband to sit in the living room. Might be because of the miscommunication, he just came and opened the bedroom where I had taken the kids so that they don't see him coming. The expressions were clearly seen for us, but I couldn't show you all. Anyways, they were really excited to see their father after a week. So that's all for today's video and I hope you liked it. See you soon with more vlogs and recipes. Stay healthy and stay safe everyone. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.